So this is the panel discussion of the Rencontre économique des ex en profonds. If we can answer this question, we are good. Should the state reinvent itself? The answer is yes. You will all say yes. So let's have a look at the solutions. So if the state reinvents itself, everything will get better. If the uh, state uh, uh, puts uh, fewer taxes, it will be uh, better. So it means that we'll be able to increase the employment rate by 10 points. And if we can do that, we will get 130 billion euros worth of revenues in the state coffers. So it means that all of the economic difficulties of our country will be settled. But at 4 p.m., in 25 minutes' time, France should be saved, ladies and gentlemen, because we will be able to save France by providing the answers that you are all expecting. So uh, before, so there are uh, seven uh, uh, avenues uh, to reinvent the state, what could be necessary in order to put the table in the right place. So this is a topic that has nothing to do with the general elections, and we know that uh, you have lots of free of charge paradigms. I'm with Augustin de Romana, the uh, chairman of Aéroport de Paris and uh, chairman of Paris Europlace. Thanks a lot for being with us. And Nicolas Dufour as well who is with us, who is the uh, CEO of BP, BPI France, a legacy of Francois Hollande. And BPI France has been able to operate for the past 11 years. And it is not a public bank that could be subject to the worms in order to save lame ducks instead of having a long-term uh, strategic vision. And Nicolas is still with us. So that's a piece of good news. Thanks a lot to you. So we have uh, 20 minutes to say from Augustin de Romane, Nicolas Dufour, you can deliver your introductions, and then I will be talking about different points. Augustin, over to you. So good afternoon to all of you. It's a very difficult exercise to do. Have four minutes, have four avenues. Is it possible to lower the music? Oh. Should we reinvent the state in four minutes' time, first and foremost? What I would say is that we suffered a violent disease. It has been the case since 1960. It's Keynesianism. The uh, politicians have uh, increased uh, public uh, spending. And uh, life was great. And in 1980, 1981, uh, public expenditure went up. And the public deficit is huge. So I can tell you that the state cannot embark upon uh, this policy that has been implemented for the past 50 years by settling problems while uh, spending uh, quite a lot. Second point that I would like to highlight now. Uh, Christophe Guillou gave an interview in Le Point magazine, and I quote, today, the uh, country is being he held together through the welfare state, but it's the next step to being fragile. People have understood that the next restructuring plan won't be in the industry. It will be a restructuring plan in the civil service. So the uh, country is being uh, bound together through the welfare state, but it's a ghost because it uh, can go on uh, through indebtedness. Third point, the state won't be able to reinvent itself if it tries to reinvent itself since 1958. When you look at uh, the administrative social uh, books, uh, the state has pondered over the way it should be reformed. This is the state that is concerned for itself. And since 1958, the state hasn't been able to reform itself. Why? There is a root cause in the state, unlike a private company, unlike the personal life of people. The responsibility spirit has vanished into thin air. When something works well, everybody will be on the photo shoot for the inauguration, and when uh, something is uh, failing, there is no one who is responsible and accountable. Local elites have disappeared because people cannot uh, have uh, two terms of office. But there is a problem of major responsibility at the central state and at the level of local authorities. For example, we've severed the link between the local authorities and the local taxes with the abolition of the home tax. This generates problems that you are familiar with. I'm already too long, so I will conclude. The best illustration of the spirit of responsibility is the ability for an authority to delegate. 
Of course, in life, what matters is not to exercise power, but to give power to others and to choose people who will wield power. But in the state, people can live through the powers that they have and that they keep. During uh, the uh, uh, term of Mr. Macron, you know that Mr. Macron doesn't want to delegate responsibilities. And of course, uh, we can object to his way of governing, the lack of delegation. But Mr. Macron was uh, uh, successful in a specific field. It delegated everything. That's quite unusual. And it will be a major success. On, eight, on December the 8th, President Macron decided that Notre Dame Cathedral had to be rebuilt. Unlike all bureaucratic practices entrusted to one person, with means in order to build the cathedral in five years' time. And Georges Lain, a commander, couldn't accept the bureaucratic stupidity that would have been in his way if he had not been a five-star general. So he would have succeeded the feat that Notre Dame could be opened in five years' time. So if we want to reinvent the state, we need to use accountability, responsibility, delegation, all of these uh, values that have uh, disappeared in the uh, manuals and books that have trained the bureaucrats for the past 30 years. Thanks a lot. On a fait un grand pas. Il... We've made a great leap forward, and it's not uh, yet 4 p.m. Remember what uh, Jean Tirole said. So he discussed with uh, Christine Lagarde the key is governance. I hope that Bruno Bernal will be able to manage the 2030 plan. So you have a specific type of governance. And Nicolas Dufourc told me I'm a bank, a genuine bank, a full-fledged bank. So each year I can produce a net banking income. I'm a bank. I'm not a public establishment. And the BPI can vouch for that. Uh, Nicolas Dufour, can you deliver your introduction, your introduction, please? So this is a very uh, serious and complex topic. What is the state, the central state and the administrations? Those who worked in the state, raise your hands. So this is French society, in fact. So the people who've raised uh, their hands are public uh, officers. You've, I mean, these are people who've worked uh, for the state, not only uh, public officials. You have local authorities, of course, but at the same time, you have Brussels. We shouldn't uh, forget Brussels. I mean, Brussels is a part and parcel of our state. A second comment, uh, public services. If you consider public services are under attack because they are not efficient, uh, teachers are poorly paid, nurses also are poorly paid, etc. In some countries, the uh, state consensus is strong. There's some trust because public service and civil service works well. What is uh, the situation like in France? Maybe I will conclude with a punchline. Uh, three GDP points uh, for pensions every year. So three uh, GDP points annually devoted to uh, pensions, much more than the other European countries, 100 billion euros. So we are addicted to uh, pensions. And the 100 million is not invested in uh, civil service. And in other countries, the, they make other choices. You can work more in order to pay the teachers. Second comment. Um, that is quite significant, by the way. Then on, then on, there's um, another topic, the central state. Uh, the central state, these are administrations. What's wrong in uh, the central administrations, in ministries? What's wrong with them? There's something that is quite wrong. Uh, the uh, different uh, uh, chief of staff uh, headquarters. So during the first term of Emmanuel Macron, the first two years, he decided decided I mean, to reduce the size of the different uh, cabinets. But then on, uh, the uh, process was uh, uh, loose. And you have a sub departments in the and central administrations. You have young people uh, aged 30. That's 
it doesn't work. It's a disaster. When you are the head of a central administration, you are appointed by the high authorities of a country. Do you have some leeway? Do you have some total leeway to appoint the uh, board? No. The employees are appointed by ministers, so it can't work. Let's say that at BPI, I was obliged to get the agreement of the uh, minister for the appointment of the main employees. and. Uh, there wouldn't be any BBI, BBI without them. So if, of course, if you want to have a public management system, it's important to have uh, common sense rules, uh, delegation rules, of course. And the last point that I would like to highlight, maybe you will like it or not, you have to consider the high authority for public transparency. It went too far, too far. So there are good intentions. Uh, but in fact, uh, lots of uh, people are, are strapped. And uh, people from the private sector won't want to work uh, for the uh, state. Within the BPI, uh, some employees are not entitled to work in other divisions of BPI because there would be a potential conflict of interest. I mean, it's going too far. So if you consider the state, it is quite uh, transverse. And if you consider the exchanges between the private and public sector, they are disastrous. I listened to you, I've taken notes of what you've said, and uh, so, so to remove the status of a civil servant, this is one of the starting points of the state reform. Do you share that viewpoint? I think that we shouldn't be too obsessed with that. When you are a civil servant, uh, um, it uh, it is cheap. If you uh, eradicate the status of a self service, I mean you will have to pay more, and we don't have a capital, so it is a wrong avenue. Uh, Augustin, what do you think of that? What uh, uh, Nicola said is wise from a budget viewpoint. If you consider the status of a civil servant. Uh, it will be difficult for the state to entrust public positions with people with a civil service uh, missions in the ministries. If you want to be a subdirector for 10 or 15 years, it means that you will be in the civil service. That's not a good idea because you have lots of people from the private service who would like to work for the public service, but they can't. So we cannot uh, eradicate the status of the civil servant, but uh, we could unlock and unleash all the rigidities. Basically, people cannot choose their employees. You need to think about, uh, about the status. If I don't depend on a status, I mean, I can pay people on meritocracy basis. This is what the state has done. And uh, you have, uh, that's a very good idea. But back to the ministerial cabinet, uh, Nicola is right. Uh, 10 years ago, there were 650 members in the uh, ministerial cabinet. So it was a big process. Why? It, in 1965, General de Gaulle organized meetings at the Elysee, and he said, I don't want to see people of the ministerial cabinets in the meeting. I want to see the legitimate people who've been appointed in the Council of Ministers, the directors, the heads, the directors and the heads. I mean, they felt accountable, and they were able to see the President of the Republic who hosted them. And upon the initiative of Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, who wanted to be uh, surrounded by the best. He was surrounded by people who were skilled in his cabinet, and the ministerial cabinets were created according to his own image without any legitimacy, and hence lots of inconveniences highlighted by Nicola. When I worked at the Elysee Palace, I wanted to make sure that central people could get access to the President of the Republic. I said to a big director, you will come and see me, and you will uh, deliver 
deliver your presentation to the president of the republic, it was a disaster because the directors, they didn't have a holistic and strategic vision of a sector because they were not asked to do so. Over the past 20 years, these people haven't been asked to talk about the big vision to the president of the republic. So it's important I mean, to turn to people and to tell them you will be promoted because you are successful or you won't be promoted because you failed. But this uh, situation doesn't exist. That's why these systems are necrotic. So there's a link with uh, status that uh, we've uh, talked about earlier. Next question now. We talked about... Uh, we, we, we public uh, spending amongst European countries are characterized by gaps. And of course, uh, thanks or due to the pension system, we have differences with others. Maybe one day we will have to use one dose of mandatory capitalizations in order to change the way we can fund the pension system. So we're going to save time. Let's say yes. Let's say yes. Of course, uh, uh, I'm, we are stating the obvious, in fact, in a company that is aging, uh, distribution will hit a wall. So uh, capitalization is a matter of urgency. And of course, uh, for those uh, who are like us, uh, we've been talking about this uh, topic for the past 25 years. I mean, uh, some European countries haven't embarked upon a reform, but uh, some of them uh, decided to create a reform. They decided to uh, set aside some capitals and they decided to invest. Norway, the uh, Norwegian fund invested outside. Norway, so they created 1,500 billion. So if you want to found the pension fund, I mean, we shouldn't focus on the French recipes. Wealth is not only in France. Wealth is Asia. The United States, uh, French savings should be invested in France, but in other countries, uh, French savings should be invested also in uh, climate transition. We need to uh, get uh, the wealth where it is, I mean, especially the countries with a growth rate of 8%. But of course, the uh, pension uh, funds will be lower than those of the Norwegians, the British, the Swedes, the Germans. So it's a moral scandal. So the Netherlands now. The Netherlands, they have a capitalization system. The pensions are 30% above those of the French and uh, seven points of GDP to found uh, the pension. And in France, uh, it is 14 points. When you have a 2% interest rate and growth is between 5 or 7% in emerging countries, if you can't get access to capital, you can't get rich. Einstein said that the eighth wonder of the world is the composed interest. So if our compatriots don't accept the capitalization, they cannot set up a kind of, uh, uh, some kinds of assets that people will be impoverished. There's another dimension, the social model, social spending. At a point in time, we'll have uh, to think about the funding of social welfare, social protection. One of the key problems with uh, purchasing power, it's not a salary, but it is the net salary. Why there's a problem with a net salary? You have a net salary because you have lots of monetary taxes that will fund the social model. If you have a gross salary plus what we call the employer's contributions, the person who gets 3,200 euros with a gross salary, net he will get 1,750 euros. According to you, will we need to change radically the way we finance the social model, i.e. the um, this funding model should be switched to uh, the uh, tax uh, system. And M Michel Rocard uh, did that when we created the CSG, CSG on salaries. Uh, but CSG, it's an income tax, in fact. But if you consider the funding model of the welfare state for the salary, I mean, it has hit a wall. So, as I said, it has hit a wall. 
survey was an average system social VAT, and there are many debates, or a social CSG, Nicola. But you need to find the right bracket. The bracket shouldn't be the salaries. So the bracket could be consumption or capital. Do we want to fund the French social model with capital? We know that it's not possible. Can we do that using consumption? We know that it's possible, but it has been discarded. At some point in time, it was about to occur. And by the way, Angela Merkel did that. And when you are facing a trade deficit, so you, we, we've made a mistake because we didn't create the social VAT. And of course, we need to create the a social CSG, so basically the funding will be managed by the capital revenues, the labor revenues, and the revenues or the uh, income of the uh, pensions. Mr. Romane, what do you think of that? We need to think about uh, accountability, which expenditure is socialized and which expenditure has to do with individual responsibility, it would be a good idea to have individual insurance in order to mirror what you cost to society and the pooling of risk that will be managed with more responsibilities. In Germany, for example, mutual funds won't reimburse you if you don't have a prevention measure. If you consider the social security in France, it is based on cure and care. So people have a medical prevention system that is quite low versus the United States. In the United States, I mean, health is very expensive. So at the end of the day, you are obliged uh, to uh, uh, launch some prevention programs. Of course, we uh, shouldn't uh, follow suit of the United States, but there should be more interactions between the spending and accountability and responsibility for those who are in charge of spending one day on your uh, salary slip. Your uh, automotive insurance will be a debate. So it was an idea that was developed by Jean Lorenzi. So as you've said, Nicolas, savings in uh, Europe shouldn't go to the US or buy savings programs in the US. We need to keep part of the savings in Europe and in our country that is reluctant to risk taking. We need to find uh, different uh, ways. The Union of Capital Markets, one day we could have a European savings product, but it means that uh, tax system should be harmonized. But if you want to harmonize the tax systems, you will hit a wall. So Mr. Lorenzi has said that we need to attract savings, and savings are being held by um, older people, so there should be a state guarantee on the invested capital. But I think that this idea was a crazy idea, but I think that now it's a good idea so that the state can manage the expenditure. In France and in Europe, we are short of cash. So I think that uh, subsidies are over. So maybe not in the different uh, manifestos, but we are short of cash. We are short of money. The only product that is frugal is a guarantee, is a warranty. And a warranty is indispensable, because if you consider this private sector, when it comes to funding industrialization, uh, climate change, digitalization, so uh, they, uh, the, the, the sector has asked for the mitigation of risks, so there should be some warranty guarantee funds that will guarantee and warranty the multinationals, uh, the investment funds, the union of capital markets. Is it a solution? Maybe. I don't know, but haven't uh, understood why, because you can build a, a big uh, football field, but if you don't have BlackRock investors who will invest in order to fund the different mechanisms in the US, your savings will be undermined by big American companies. So I'm not quite sure that I've understood the union of capital markets and how it will mitigate the risks. Europe is conservative. In Europe, you have older people, and Europe doesn't take the risks like the Americans. 
So regarding the union of capital markets, I'm not as pessimistic as Nicola. If we want a Slovenian entrepreneur or Estonian entrepreneur, uh, if we want them to raise a capital in conditions similar to NASDAQ, we won't achieve that if we don't have an innovation stock market. Basically, there are lots of hidden things. For example, the pooling of the European debt. The United States have spent massively, and they are concerned by their public debt. Their debt level will be as high as ours. So with one currency and 27 countries in Europe, if we are not able to unify the debt, each state will fall down with the speculators. Remember what happened in 2012, so we have to be careful. Of course, we need to pay attention to the union of capital markets, but there's something that we shouldn't forget. The solution is a political solution. The Europeans, do they want a common future? Otherwise, they will be mangled by the speculation in the financial markets. Another topic that I would like to address, simplification. Simplification, this is a key topic. I talked uh, with Guillaume Patrinoil and Thierry Morlon, and they wanted to simplify with Sylvain Orebi who worked on simplification. The only solution to simplify and streamline the country is uh, to privatize the first floor of the Elysee Palace. And there should be a task force under the authority of the President of the Republic. Otherwise, it won't work. So we gave you some insights. I mean, to save the country, it has taken 25 minutes. But of course, it will take more time to implement uh, those measures uh, to save the country.